the show will continue. Here we go. We're jumping right into it. Uh, next presenter is from a company called Fortress Bio. It's ticker FBIO. And I'm going to be welcoming on here the chairman, Lindsay Rosenwald. Lindsay, how are you? Hey, Brent. I'm good. How are you? I am doing excellent today. And guess what? We're going to uh, be speaking with you a little bit later today. You're going to be on a panel. Is that correct? That is correct. That is correct. Coming yes. up in just like an hour or so, right? Uh, yeah, I think a little bit less. Cool. Well, we will see you again then. I'll let you have the floor to tell us a little bit about Fortress. Great. Thank you. Thanks so much. And thanks, everybody, for attending. Uh, I'm the CEO and, and chairman of Fortress. Uh, I will obviously be looking, uh, making forward-looking statements. Feel free to review our SEC filings for complete financial statements and risk factors. As you can see, we've been very busy building value for shareholders. The Fortress Biotech business model is an incredibly scalable model. It has the goal of consistently increasing shareholder value through the constant acquisition of approved FDA products and development stage programs. As you can see from this slide, we have a large and growing portfolio. You need to think of it this way. Each time we acquire a drug or a drug candidate, we have increased shareholder value and decreased risk through extreme diversification. First, I'm going to give you a brief overview of our product portfolio. Then on subsequent slides, I'll go into detail on how we accomplish this strategy and then go through some key products. And then if we have time, explain how we execute this on a very scalable model. Since we only have 20 minutes or so, it's a lot to cram in, so I'll try to hit mostly the highlights. On the commercial side, you can see we have seven FDA-approved products in the dermatology space that we currently market. We ended the second quarter at a 60 million annualized run rate for the quarter. Regarding our future late stage programs, we will be filing a rolling new drug application in the fourth quarter and anticipate filing a biologics license application next year. We have or have meaningful economic interests in four registration trials ongoing and potentially as many as eight in the next several months. We have 18 clinical programs in 24 clinical trials. We have over 20 full and part-time search and evaluate professionals that look for these opportunities we have over a dozen partner companies. Those companies finance the majority of our pipeline. And in return for the asset or assets that we've provided them, provided those companies, we receive stock, future royalties, and future equity. So in a little bit, we'll go through some of these products and product candidates. It's important to remember that each one of these candidates or products will create value for us through one or more of each of the direct product revenue, royalties, equity value, and monetization. Why don't we go to the next slide? We have a very different, much different model for a life sciences company. We focus on creating shareholder value in an aggressive fashion while potentially reducing risk through diversification. We work in a universe where there are hundreds of billions of dollars of life science research and development conducted annually all over the world. Whether it's governments, whether it's universities, whether it's big or small companies, domestic or foreign, there are many, many research programs and marketed pharmaceutical products that fit in the category that we look for. Most importantly, it's a surprisingly inefficient market to find excellent FDA approved and development stage opportunities. Our business is to aggressively find these opportunities and create shareholder value from them. We don't wanna miss out on any great opportunity, whether it is an already approved product or a clinical stage product or even an earlier product development opportunity. Based on our ability to execute, we create shareholder value in four ways. First, we have direct product sales. Currently, we do so through our dermatology business, 
And we certainly expect other therapeutic categories in the future to create product revenues. We also expect to receive product royalties from, our, from most of our partner companies. Thirdly, we receive equity dividends equal to about 2.5% of the fully diluted number of shares outstanding in most of our partner companies. This is very important for two main reasons. It greatly incentivizes us to continuously add value to these companies rather than look to exit them. You'll see later how for Mustang Bio, we have put in multiple late stage and early stage programs. Greatly, this greatly increases the potential future value of the company for all shareholders, including Fortress and Fortress shareholders. Uh, monetizations. We expect in the last in, in the next months and years ahead to see potential large revenue streams from monetization of some of these partner companies, as well as assets, as well as sales of fully owned drugs and drug candidates. For example, you'll see in a few minutes that yesterday we announced that Fortress expects next week to receive approximately $64.5 million from AstraZeneca for our share of a partner company which is a value driven from just one of our over 25 development stage programs. A fourth potential future equity stream includes the sale of priority review vouchers. Our rare disease portfolio could potentially qualify for and hopefully realize value for as many as three priority review vouchers. Those vouchers recently have sold uh, for about $100 million each. Next slide. How do we accomplish so much in such a short period of time? People, focus, and execution. Our very large and growing search and evaluate team, 22 and growing currently, look all over the world for FDA approved products, products approved in other countries, and development stage programs from all over the world. Remember, hundreds of billions of dollars a year globally are spent on R&D. It's a really, really inefficient market. These opportunities can be from other companies, foreign or domestic, as I said, they can come from academic centers, government labs, et cetera. We're not gonna find them at JP Morgan or other large uh, medical conferences and, and industry conferences. You'll find us there, but there we're looking to partner our own programs or sell our own programs. Our search and evaluate team just looks where others don't. The criteria for acquiring development stage programs is primarily drug candidates that have been in human trials, that have good proof of concept or drug candidates where there is proof of concept, a proof of concept human clinical trial would not be expensive or time consuming. Once we acquire a program that requires further development, that opportunity will either go into one of our partner companies, into a new partner company, or directly into the Fortress pipeline. And remember, all this is built to increase shareholder value while reducing risk through extreme diversification. Each of these opportunities will somehow fit into one or more of these four categories that I mentioned in the previous slide. Why don't we go to the next slide? What's special about the Fortress Search and Evaluate model? What we look for is different than most others in the industry. Most other companies that in license development stage programs focus on either a therapeutic class or target like cystic fibrosis, muscular dystrophy, there's a lot of them, unfortunately. Or they'll focus on mechanisms of action, such as antibodies, cell therapies, gene therapy. It's a really long list of, of uh, types of medicines. In other words, they'll be looking for drug candidates that fit into their specific technological or therapeutic expertise. At Fortress, we look for opportunities that are clinical stage with proof of concept in humans, or as I said, Proof of concept can be developed inexpensively. They should address an unmet medical need or be superior to current standard of care. They should be available at a small fraction of the net present value. We cannot and will not pay up for an opportunity in such an inefficient market. We need to find, other, find opportunities that others miss. And that's it. That's our criteria. These are very hard to find, but if you look hard enough, you find them. If you have a trained and motivated search and evaluate team that's heavily supported with capital and motivated professionals behind them, focusing like a laser beam on creating that specific deal flow and only that deal flow, you would be surprised how many opportunities we find. Next slide. 
Uh, this is a really important slide. We believe that our relationships with our partner companies must be mutually beneficial. The Fortress Ecoscience, uh, I'm sorry, the Fortress Life Science ecosystem is built to create shareholder value through identifying great drugs and great drug candidates. When we find an opportunity, if it fits in with a partner company and they want it, they can acquire it. This will increase the intrinsic value of the partner company, which in turn will increase the intrinsic value and risk of Fortress. Remember, our continuing interest in these companies, usually through equity and royalties, keeps all interests aligned. Next slide. Here's an example of our product revenue business, our dermatology business. Journey Medical Corp is our commercial derm business, made up largely from the commercial team of the highly successful Medicis Pharmaceuticals, which was sold years ago to Bausch Health for a little over $2.5 billion. Journey was formed from that commercial team, including a lot of our sales force of about 60 or so drug reps. Primarily through the Fortress Business Development Team, Journey has acquired 11 pharmaceutical products. They are currently marketing seven of those products. We have had record revenues every year since we launched our first product in 2016. Even though the pandemic negatively affected everyone in our industry, we still had record revenues in 2020. Our current second year, uh, I'm sorry, our second year revenues this year exceeded 15 million, which gives us a $60 million a year run rate at that point, and it was a record quarter for us. We're extremely excited about the potential for uh, Journey Medical. Next slide. I'm running out of time, so I'm going to try to go a little bit faster. CAEL 101 is a monoclonal antibody for the treatment of amyloidosis. It's a rare and routinely fatal disease caused by amyloid deposits in the vital organs, including the heart. It's had very, very promising, promising data. We were able to acquire worldwide rights on extraordinarily reasonable terms several years ago. We were then able to set up a partner company called Calum Biosciences. We put together a great management team and found a large biotech partner, Alexion Pharmaceuticals. Subsequently, Alexion was acquired by AstraZeneca very recently, Yesterday, AstraZeneca and Calum announced that the intent to exercise early the AstraZeneca right to acquire Calum would be done next week. The total compensation can be up to $500 million, including $150 million up front. We anticipate the closing of the transaction next week. Fortress will receive 43% of all payments, including $64.5 million up front and potentially up to a total of 215 million over the next several years. Let's go to the next slide. Here's another great example of, of a, a drug our company was able, to, our business development team was able to find that's creating, we believe, a lot of value for Fortress. This is a drug candidate. We will initiate the filing of our new drug application this year. It's for a rare pediatric disease called Menke's disease. It's found in newborns who lack a gene. They, codes for the protein that allows copper to be absorbed from the GI tract and from there into the circulation and from there into the central nervous system. It doesn't sound important, but it is. It's necessary for normal neurologic brain growth. These children are born normally, but immediately develop rapidly irreversible neurologic damage and die at a very young age. Our drug candidate has shown remarkable efficacy in clinical trials. In the pivotal trial, the drug showed a median survival of newborns in over, of over 14 years versus a historical control of a little bit over one and a half years. We've partnered with a company, Sentinel Therapeutics. They will commercialize the product for us. We will receive a total of up to $275 million in milestones, including $20 million through the NDA new drug approval. We've already received $8 million in payments. We will receive tiered royalties peaking at 25% of sales over $100 million. We'll also keep 100% of any proceeds from a priority review voucher if one is issued. Recently, they have sold for a little bit over $100 million. Uh, the next slide, please. Cosabilimab is our proprietary checkpoint antibody. It's an anti-PDL1. It's currently 
uh, finishing its first pivotal trial. We expect top line data this year. It's believed to be a $1 billion market opportunity for the company in, in the variety of potential indications we will pursue. We compare favorably with two drugs already on the market for cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma, our first drug uh, uh, launch. Uh, we expect to launch a pivotal trial in non-small cell lung cancer shortly. Uh, that is a very, very large market indication. Current drugs in the category sell, I believe, in excess of $12 billion a year in that category. Uh, it's a really exciting drug. And again, we expect to file for approval next year. Uh, next slide. Uh, MB107 and 207 are, are drugs for what's called newborn uh, uh, bubble boy disease. These are children that are born without functioning immune systems. It's a single gene defect. Uh, basically, we license out of the NIH and St. Jude Medical Center uh, two drugs. Uh, one develops, uh, I'm sorry, delivers the, dream, the gene for newborn babies with bubble boy, and the other delivers the same gene to, to children that were previously transplanted, but whose transplants are failing. Uh, both drug candidates have shown remarkable efficacy. We anticipate starting our pivotal phase two trial shortly, and we believe both drugs uh, should qualify for a priority review voucher. We'll do one more slide and, and, and then uh, stop. MB106 is our autologous anti-CD20 for uh, CD20 20 CAR T for non Hodgkin's lymphoma and chronic lymphocytic leukemia. To date, we've seen excellent efficacy and a very tolerable side effect and toxicity profile. Our most recent data showed a 93% objective response rate with a 67% complete response rate. In follicular lymphoma patients, the ORR and CR rates were 91 and 82% respectively. We believe it may have a better product profile compared to the existing anti-CD9 CAR-Ts that are on the market, and that is a very sizable market. Uh, we anticipate starting enrollment in our multi-center pivotal trial uh, shortly, which will lead to a pivotal trial sometime next year. I could go on for an hour. I don't think I will. We started late, and we don't want to you know, go later than, than we should. Appreciate your time. Uh, again, the Fortress business model, we don't do any of our own uh, uh, early research. There's hundreds of billions a year worth of research all over the world. We look for that research and we acquire the ones we think makes the most sense. And uh, we think it's a great and extremely scalable business model. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate your time, Lindsay, and appreciate you keeping an eye on the clock on the clock there. And if, if you don't mind, we do have time for like a question or two, if you're, if you're okay with that. Sure. sure. So this is probably like, you know, picking your favorite kid sort of thing, but you just went over maybe five or six candidates at the end there. What are, you know, your 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 top two that your management team is most excited about right now? Uh, so, Calum, the, uh, the amyloidosis drug was one. Again, next week we're selling it to AstraZeneca for, uh, you know, up to $500 million. Uh, we get 43% of that. Uh, obviously, we'll still be interested to see the drug finish its development and get to market and sell well. Certainly. Uh, and then, you know, I did mention uh, uh, Cosabilimab, which is our uh, PDL1 uh, uh, checkpoint inhibitor, which will file hopefully for approval next year. That's going into a market that could be worth over $40 billion a year. So, a small fraction of that market could be extremely meaningful to us. Uh, and the last one I would say is, is Cyprium. Uh, CYP, uh, CYPR 101, that's our uh, ultra rare disease, Menke's disease drug product that will launch the uh, rolling new drug application this year. Hope to have approval next year. Uh, very, very serious unmet medical need, a terrible mm -hmm. disease. And part of the great thing in this business is creating medicine or buying medicines and finishing the development of those medicines that really impact human health. Certainly, that's, that's why everyone's here today. I hope. Uh, and and really appreciate you coming on today, sure. Lindsay. Lindsay Rosenwald, he's chairman of Fortress Bio. It's ticker FBIO. And again, we'll see you in a, a, maybe a little less than an hour here for a panel, Lindsay. Great. Brent, thank you. And thanks, everybody, for, for listening. All right. Bye. Have a good day, sir. We'll see you later.